traffic control. This is Alpha 254. Requesting clearance for departure. Roger that. We are clear. Proceed to runway 5. <laughs> If anyone is to blame for these events, Mr. Thornton, it is you. Alpha Protocol began here, after all. train. you'd be under. Those tranquilizers wore off fast. Who are you? Why did you drug me? My name is Mina. And I didn't drug you. They did. They do it to everyone who arrives here. To protect the location. Then I'm not sticking around for any more chemical therapy. I'm getting out of here. And how do you propose to do that? You're locked in. There's a guard outside. Eventually he's going to come check on you. And when he does... Why wait? Set off an alarm, let him know I'm awake. What? That'll bring him running. Saves me the trouble of hunting him down. Activating the alarm now. You know what you're doing. I did it. Guess Sleeping Beauty's had enough. That you, Mike? You just hold on. I'm sending some guards to tuck you back in.
lights on. Watch out for cameras. If they spot you or you destroy them, they'll sound an alarm. Sign of our new arrival? No sign of him yet. Careful, Mike. Truck coming in. And guards at the exit. Try to stay out of sight if you can. To the line, Mike. Give it up.
that's enough. That's enough? I think that's my line. What the hell's going on? Why did you drug me? We need to get the location of this facility confidential. Especially if you got kidnapped and questioned. You could use some lessons in hospitality. I'll forgive you this time. Gracious of you. So this is how the conversation is going to go. You, me, video screen. Yep. I'm going to ask you some questions, run you through some more tests. Then you and I can talk face to face. That make you feel better? No, but some morphine might. Or whatever cocktail you shot into my system. What the hell was that? That's classified. Although I didn't expect you to shake it off so quickly. I've been reading and rereading your dossier. It says here you've got a military background. That's good. I was in the Marines myself. I'm sorry. That a crack agent? No, sir. I'm sorry you're not with them anymore. Must be frustrating pushing papers and talking to new recruits like me. <clears throat> well, your military experience should prove useful. Weapons range and shooting tests should be a breeze. If you gain more experience in the field, you may want to specialize further. But we can leave that until you've got some missions under your belt. That's it. Now I'm gonna let you out of the pen here and meet the rest of the crew. There's more of you? I'm unique. So is the rest of the staff. They all have their little quirks, but that's what makes them perfect for the job. They'll be running you through the basics of weapons, gadgets, and espionage tactics. When you're cleared on the basics, come find me for your assignment. I won't lie to you, Mike. It's a big one, and dangerous, but I think you're the man for the job. Make the rounds. I'll see you soon. Big ass screen. No weapons past this point. Asshole Parker's going to check the system again. Orientation's not mandatory. You can turn around and go back to Westridge right now. Although that might make him upset. You guys must have spent a fortune on the TVs in this place. You all done? As much as I thought was necessary. I have to admit I was worried whether we'd be able to keep you here after you woke up in medical. 
You gave our staff a run for its money. Maybe it's their training that's in question, not mine. Fair enough. It'll be a good excuse to up the morning drills around here. It's almost like you did a 180 as soon as you left this room. I want a real mission, not distractions. I'll prove myself in the field. Huh. Well, I suppose we'll have to waive the physical evaluation. Tell me why you're here. Not everyone gets chosen for this line of work, but you volunteered. Usually, we have to ask. I guess I'm an adrenaline junkie. And the women, of course. I'm not sure we need a cowboy. You need someone, or I wouldn't be here. What makes you think you're ready? Because I tell you, we get a lot of recruits in here, and you're not convincing me. I'm ready, and I'm tired of my questions getting answered by more questions. Welcome to our world, Mike. My job is to help you cut through questions and get an answer. Beyond the guns, tech, and sneaking around in the dark, there's one last part of this job that nobody else here quite gets. I'm listening. Good, because listening is a large part of it. The way you talk to people, your attitude. That's what we're going to discuss now. Are you suggesting I have an attitude problem? No, believe it or not, you're not here because you're a people person. You're here because your psych profile says you're skilled at manipulating others. Was that a compliment? You'll see. The way you project yourself definitely affects what people think of you. And your reputation will. <laughs> what do I care what others think? You shouldn't. Having a bad or good rep with someone can actually gain you different benefits. Sometimes you want to piss someone off so they can't think straight. Other times you want to build a strong rapport with someone and talk your way out of a bad situation. All depends on your objective. This goes for your handlers as well. We're going to be sending you into a lot of dangerous places. And your only backup is going to be who you're talking to on your headset. How you treat them is going to have an effect on the success of your mission. So if I piss them off, I'm screwed? No. A handler that likes you too much and puts emotions before the mission can be just as dangerous as one who resents you. This is a long way of telling me that I should just act the way I want? I didn't realize this was an acting gig. No, again, there are no bad choices, just results. Over time, folks may hear about you and your attitude before they meet you. They may have a preconceived notion of how you're going to treat them, which can affect their reaction. Well, maybe they should take the time to know the real me. If only. Time's something no one seems to be able to spare, especially during a conversation. Although that can be a plus. I don't see how. The clock doesn't stop when you're speaking to someone. So if you need to get your second win before a fight, making small talk can buy you time. But if I'm running on adrenaline, won't chatting take me off my guard? It can. So if you need to get to the point, act instead of fight. For example, if you don't think I have any more to teach you, then you could just say, I'm done with this. I wouldn't think any less of you. You seem to have the basics down. Why wouldn't I just shoot someone instead of talking to them? Sometimes it is better if you shoot first. Still approaching someone to talk to them can allow you to get the drop on them if you get close enough to strike. Use it. Assuming there's even a way you want the conversation to go. Like if I wanted to seduce someone? I mean, not like I have trouble with that or anything. If that's what you want to do, pay attention to the clues in your environment. Sometimes people will have advice, and intel can help. But there's another way. Read much? Mostly weapon manuals. Then I make sure I actually test it myself. The specs are sometimes off. There's a host of information out there through dossiers, email, and other documents that represent total research others have collected on a target, organization, or operation. And what does that get me, exactly? Sometimes you'll spot obvious triggers. People who don't respond well to smart asses like me. Others who respect loyalty, duty, a professional approach. Others who don't have time for bullshit and like it when you get to the point. But dossiers just don't contain psych information. They'll usually have combat information on your target as well. What side they favor, any past injuries, common weapons or tactics they use. Some of it blunt, some of it subtle. But if push comes to shove, it can give you an edge in combat. The more you've done your homework, the more vulnerable they'll be. Can we skip the pep talk? I want to get started. Fair enough. Meet me in the command center, and I can give you a proper mission briefing. Good. Because I'm sick of this room. Trust me, Mike. If it was up to me, you'd never see this interrogation cell again.
recognize him? That's Sheikh Ali Shahid, the voice of Al-Samad. They say he was responsible for shooting down that airliner in the Middle East. Yeah, he got his hands on some prototype Halbeck technology. A missile with a multi-stage targeting system called Jacob's Ladder. That airliner was his first target. Specs and shadiness of this whole thing aside, how did Shahid get his hands on that missile? Missiles. He's got more. He stole them from Halbeck and we need them back before he gets any more trigger happy. Then we want you to kill him. About time I'm getting tired of this place. All right, then. Pack your gear. You're heading to Saudi Arabia. Not coming with me? I'll be there in spirit. And on video and radio when needed, Agent. And I just got here. Oh, well. I'm gonna miss this place. I doubt it. I'll contact you when you reach Saudi Arabia. Care to explain how Halbeck lost its missiles? Old news. An accounting error. The missiles. You didn't lose them, did you? Angry, Mr. Thornton? Because of what happened in Saudi Arabia. Mike, can you read me? I'm getting lots of interference. Reading you loud and clear. Where can I find Shahid? It's a little more complicated than that. It's gonna require some groundwork, and lots of it. Good to see you're eager to get started. Finding Shahid is your primary objective. Trouble is, we don't know his location. But we have three leads. An arms dealer, Nasri, is believed to have sold the missiles to Shahid, and he's currently operating in Saudi Arabia. If you can intercept him, maybe he can tell you where Shahid is, or guide you to the missiles. Got it. What's the next lead? We also tracked down the location of an airfield Shahid used in the past. If you can sneak in and plant a listening device, we may be able to track flight Shahid is using to move through Saudi Arabia. And the third lead? We've got the coordinates of an al Samad detention camp, also used as a stockpile for weapons. We suspect the missiles may be stored there. Why are we playing around? Why not send in the troops and storm the place? We need to make sure the missiles aren't armed. If they are, our aerial assault will be one of the shortest flights in history. We'll want you to go in alone, recon the area, and shut down their radar and communications. Once that's down, we can call in air support and hit the camp hard. No pressure. And no backup. Get used to it. It's the job. You check out your new home yet? It's got some perks you might be interested in. Anything beyond the weapons locker? Thought that might hold your attention. It did? Anything else? A computer with a hub connection so fast you'll feel like you're going back in time. What, to the Stone Age? Please. You can do dossier research, encrypted emails, and if need be, access some of the weapons dealers in the area. That'll be done on your own dime, however, using whatever funds you can find in Saudi Arabia. My own money? Are you kidding? We don't want you using the Alpha Protocol accounts with rival terrorists or weapons dealers. That has a habit of getting back to us, and then Congress calls. The weapons locker you already found? Help yourself to what's inside. Just be sure to choose the ammo and armor you think suits the mission. When you're ready to head out, just use the front door, or access the missions from the main terminal. I'll have already uploaded all the mission specs to your PDA. You can review them at any time. Alright, so... is that it? Westridge. Great. Home sweet home. Thank you.